Mm -hmm. And again, we're kind of the evolution into our, our next question here. We, we've kind of talking about a, a culture under dynamic and extreme pressure changes here and influences. And you mentioned kind of this influence of Greek culture and elements of, of their life. Do we have other or, or maybe a few more examples of how the Seleucids influence Judean culture? Um, it's a very good question. I mean, I mean, in one way, a deep influence of Ju of of Seleucid culture on the Judaism that comes out of the second century is this strong resistance to the Seleucids. Is this definition of a Maccabean Hasmonean type of Judaism that wasn't fully articulated until that time period? Um, that doesn't say that uh, there's very strong Seleucid presences, but it's 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 rather the opposite. It's 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 a type of Judaism that gets articulated and becomes dominant almost as part of a response to imperial pressure. So this might be trying to draw some context for the audience here this would be potentially similar to the way that uh, athenians might define themselves as not spartan yeah absolutely in in a way i mean the in many communities in the eastern mediterranean for example the the ancient city state of babylon mm -hmm. the priests continue to have their council and they interact with this with the Seleucid overlords they, as they interacted with previous kings and empires beforehand. But we don't have any evidence of that priestly class to have a strong visceral response to the Seleucids. It almost has no impact, at least very little trace. Yeah. In Judea, again, we could say almost that there's relatively little trace. It seems to be striking that, that uh, for a certain time in the early second century, I mentioned earlier the period of the 170s that there seems to be a period in which Greek adaptation of Greek influence seems to become quite popular. Is it because it's pushed very hard or is it just becoming popular? But that from the period from the 160s onwards, that really it seems to be a refocus and a redefinition of what Judaism is and how it's not what's on the outside. It seems to be also a period of a community that's kind of turning inwards. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than becoming this international community. Uh, I mentioned the city of Maresha and Idumea in the south, right? Yeah. Uh, Maresha and Idumea clearly adopts mountains of elements from Phoenicia, from Egypt, from the Greek world, from Judea. Um, the Judeans do that too. It seems that they are adopting the, the ritual baths, for example, from the south. But, but it seems to be a period of, of really focusing inward. And that is something that is very rare um but you could also argue that perhaps without the imperial environment that that you know the directions could have been quite different and, and is there any examples of, of kind of the reverse of this happening does judean culture impact uh, the seleucids in any significant way the seleucids are so hard to grasp for us um it's it's so hard to say what is actually Seleucid, right? So, so in a way, that is that is that is very difficult. I mean, one thing, just to go back to your previous question, one thing that seems to persist in some forms of Judaism is the Seleucid era. Um, my colleague Paul Cosman has written this wonderful book on the Seleucid era, and he he, I mean, something that was well known beforehand, but really that the counting of the Greek years is something that it continues to exist in rabbinic scholarship, right? Those Greek years that are always referred to is always the Seleucid era. Uh, like, going back to your question, I'm sorry yeah. for 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 uh, uh, taking us hostage here and going back. Yeah. It, it, it's very hard to say. I mean, Judea continues to be deeply ingrained, even though it's turning itself on the inside a little bit. The Maccabees are conquering regions and are taking conquering other regions and expanding their territory. Uh, they're also uh, enslaving uh, uh, large groups of populations in the region. And presumably those get uh, sold off to via Seleucid slave markets. This doesn't impact the Seleucid empire as a structural thing, but there must be continuous exchange, right? Okay. Also, the uh, uh, one thing the Maccabees do, especially in the time, once they articulate 
their sort of independence, even though I don't like to call it that because it's difficult to articulate whether it actually means, but they also continue to serve as mercenaries for the Seleucids. So when Antiochus VII in the, late one, uh, in the early 120s takes a campaign against uh, uh, the Parthians and wants to reconquer Babylonia, uh, he calls on his then, you know, um, not ally, but also not vassal, uh, a, a Judean leader, and they follow him uh, into the campaign. Then the uh, uh, Josephus, as you know, Josephus talks to us about very keen how John Hyrcanus came back home as yeah. soon as the king was dead. But the fact that he went with him anyway still tells us that the, that they're still part of the mercenary forces of the Seleucid Empire, that despite this emphasis on separation and difference, that they're still very much uh, overlapping in many areas. That's fascinating to me, um, you know, having going through uh, my background leading up through kind of the history of Greek and Persian relations. You're always kind of at least coming at it from the outside in and looking at it from popular culture. It's always pictured as, um, you know, one side good, one side bad, never the twain shall meet. And yet, as I was doing research, I'm finding documentation of Persians and Greeks working together, not necessarily um, because they were being ruled by, but, you know, l let's get together and let's jointly attack this Greek colony and, and that sort of thing. So it seems like that there's this similar thing happening that even though the history is written by the victors says Seleucid's bad, us good, that there is this happening in the background that suggests that it's not necessarily so black and white. No, I think that's that's absolutely right. I mean, one of the funnest thing of teaching Greek history is when you show students who are taking a class on, let's say, the Persian Wars, right? That you show them all the Greek cities that were fighting on the side of the Persians, right? That yeah. that's that's one of those one of those the, the students are like, oh, I see. And I think you absolutely have it spot on there when you when it when it's about it's it's the reality in most regions in most instances is always very gray and it's very, very complicated. That makes it initially less fun because it's more difficult, but it's ultimately also more fun because it becomes so much more complex, right? Yeah. Well, and it, and it I think, mirrors the reality of, I think, political life, especially, you know, who's an enemy now can be my friend tomorrow, especially if you're looking for money to build building projects and this person's willing to pay for some mercenaries. Um, I, I think it reflects more on the reality that, you know, even back then, people made political decisions that necessarily they they didn't like, but it helped them advance their goals for their overall kind of rulership or whatever nation that they're working for. Yeah, I think I think I think that's right. And that's very, very fair. I mean, one thing one should qualify is the Hasmoneans that are expanding their their kingdom, whatever we want to call it, in the first century, they, in the late second and first century, there is also something that's different about it. And that really is when we look at the material culture, there seems to be this, this inward turning and this kind of no longer adopting, no longer continuing to use the same uh, material culture that was used before, kind of going back to, to some other things. So there is a certain conservatism in there that makes this, that makes it a little bit different and, and interesting. But that doesn't mean that at the same time, people still serve as mercenaries, as we discussed. Yeah. Yeah. 